Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. I would like to welcome you to an eight lecture series on research methods from Allama Iqbal Open University. In this course, we will see what is the research process, how to critique research, and in this critiquing part, criticism is not the only thing that we focus on. We also focus on other things that we will be discussing in this course. We will see how to read, search through, and summarize others' research, and how to conduct your own research. We will discover the difference between natural and social science, and their research methods. And we will also find out that computer science and information technology both have component that belongs to natural science and social science. So when we are applying research methods on computer science, we have to take care of, of both aspects of sciences. We will reveal mysteries of basic statistics and demonstrate their importance as an important researcher's tool. We will discover how to measure behaviors, traits, and attributes that interest you as a researcher. We will see how to develop systems and collect the kind of data that allows you to become a publishable researcher. In today's lecture, we will see what research is and what it isn't. We will also look at attributes of high quality research. We will briefly look at the history of research and model of scientific inquiry. Uh, here I have tried to define research. Research is studious inquiry or examination, investigation aimed at the discovery and interpretation of facts, revision of accepted theories or laws in the light of new facts or practical application of such new or revised theories or laws. As you can see, this uh, definition is coming from Webster's New College Year Dictionary. And um, it sounds to me a pretty good uh, run on sentence. So I have given a brief version of my own definition of research. And I say that research is a process through which new knowledge is discovered. Uh, we apply research methods in a situation where we want to discover something new that did not exist before. Here's a, an important question. Why do we conduct research? The first answer is, that we want to increase the reliability of our reported findings. Or we want to test a theory. Or we want to determine relationship between two or more variables. Or we want to extend the range of study by including more variables. And one of the most important things, why we conduct research? Because we want to publish it. And remember, if you don't publish, no one will recognize you as a good researcher. And probably this is a good place to, to explain the difference between a conference paper and a journal paper. There is a concept of peer revision. Peer revision is that once I conduct some research, someone else in the field is probably more capable of making a judgment whether my research method, whether my research findings, whether my research uh, project as a whole. What? We will try to answer this question that why should we conduct research? We should conduct research because it increases reliability of the reported findings. Or because we want to test a theory with an experimental design or otherwise or we want to determine relationship between two or more variables. Or we might still be interested in conducting research because we want to extend the range of the study 
by including more variables. And an important thing, why do we conduct research? Because we want to publish it. If we do not publish, no one will recognize you as a good researcher. So what's the difference between conference paper and a journal paper? And what is the concept of peer revision? We do peer revision because once I conduct some research, probably someone else in the field is more capable of making a judgment whether my research is significant or not. They can guide me whether my research method was according to the research objectives that I had for that, for that research project. So what is the concept of peer revision? In peer revision, once I do some research, I would like to hand it over to someone else in the field who can probably make a better judgment whether my research is significant or not. Conference papers, well, it depends the type of conference and the level of conference, but usually it is easy to get published and get accepted for a research presentation in a conference than normally a journal paper. One of my teachers told me that one journal paper is equivalent to three conference papers. While there is no hard and fast rule uh, that how many conference papers are equal to how many journal papers, but you should remember that usually journal papers require more input more hard work and contribution to theory. So if someone asks us a question, why study research method? In one sentence, I can probably answer it as follows. Because research methods develops understanding of common research methods, promotes transfer of knowledge, reliability, and replicability of research results. It also allows for determining the extent of research significance. I would like to take a moment to explain the concept of research significance. Hum research kisi bhi topic pe kar sakte hain. research is topic pe bhi kar sakte hain. Ke log choti plate mein zyada khana khate hain ya badi plate mein khana zyada khate hain. Lekin, is type ki research significance ka aap mawazna karein us research ke saath jisme cancer ki treatment ka research ki ja rahi hai ya aise uh, programs likhe ja rahe hain we are developing algorithms that enable us to communicate internet in low bandwidth situations so there is a difference between research significance so research method study of research method allows us to find out whether uh, the research is significant or less significant. Another important thing to remember, that application of research methods vary slightly for social science research and natural science research. Social science courses include uh, sociology, political science, literature, and natural science uh, fields include such as uh, biology, physics, chemistry, mathematics. Now computer science has a uh, component that comes from social science and that comes from natural science. For example, when we are developing new algorithms, uh, we are dealing with uh, number crunching. We are probably somehow dealing with uh, some aspect of natural science. But when we are trying to study people's behavior, when they adopt technology, when they do not use technology or use technology, that type of research uh, comes from social science. So what are the attributes of high quality research? First of all, it is based on the work of others. Newton once said, after he was recognized for his laws of motion and he was regarded as a big researcher and big scientist, he said, I am standing on the shoulders of giants before me. By saying that, he meant that whatever he did did not come only from him. His work was based upon the work of Copernicus and even before that, Muslim scientists. And it goes even before that, even before Muslim scientists. Ionian era researchers.
Greek researchers. So the second important attribute, it is replicable. If someone else wants to do this research, they can replicate the research study. Another important attribute, it is generalizable to other settings. We will see this concept of generalizability uh, in a moment, but this is an important attribute of high quality research. It is based on some logical rationale and tied to a theory. So in this course, actually, we will be looking at some of the theories that come from computer science background. And we will see how do we tie those theories to our research method or to our research objectives that have some logical rationale. Another important thing, it is accomplishable. It is doable. You take on a research study that you cannot do or you cannot accomplish or you cannot complete. That type of research is not considered an important one because you did not complete it. Okay, now there could be uh, an argument that re since research is a continuous process, a cyclical process, you cannot complete research uh, all by itself. So once you define objectives of your research, you try to make sure that you achieve those objectives. And if you could not achieve those objectives, you have to document those uh, hurdles, those difficulties that you faced in the process of completing that research. Another attribute of high quality research is that it generates new questions. And that research is cyclical in nature. You answer some question, some new questions are raised. So you try to answer those questions. That leads to further question. And this process never ends. Research is incremental. Research is apolitical, which means that this is an activity that should be undertaken for the good of society, not for the good of politics. And the most important of all, it is publishable. If you do not publish your research, no one will know what you have done. So you share your research by publishing it. And once you publish your research, others will know what you have accomplished. And they wouldn't have to spend time in redoing the same thing that you have done. They will build upon your research. As we saw, that was an attribute of high quality research. It is incremental. Brief history of research. Let's review history of research briefly. Irrigation civilization, about 5000 BC. At that time, some humans, they started thinking about nature and meaning of life. Ionian philosophers, around 600 to 200 BC, includes names such as Plato, Socrates, Aristotle, whose writings are still considered inspiration for a lot of researchers. Even though most of their research, most of their philosophies have been proven wrong, but it still gives us a point to start. For example, Aristotle considered founder of deductive reasoning. Deductive reasoning is drawing conclusions from general things to specific things. For example, in his book, he gave an example. All men are mortal. Socrates is a man. Therefore, conclusion is that Socrates is mortal. In the field of logic, um, all, all these sentences have their own value. They, they, they are considered very important. They're called major premise, minor premise, and then conclusion. So these researchers, these scientists deserved this credit. Next era is Islam. First contribution, even, even before going into the details of what Muslim scientists did, the most important contribution was that today we know about Plato, we know about Socrates, we know about Aristotle because their books were translated in Arabic. Then Muslim scientists, they had contribution in mathematics, medicine, 
social science. And this was probably the first time when experimental research method was developed and used. New experimental equipment and utensils and methodological details were developed. Surgical equipments and instruments were developed. Another important thing, a circumference of earth, different types of chemicals. Without going into details that why Muslims were so much involved into developing these chemicals, we do understand that Muslims had a lot of contribution to science and research in this era. After that, Francis Bacon is usually credited with this concept, even though there are controversies that uh, surround this definition of Francis Bacon, that the, this definition is coming from texts earlier than Francis Bacon. But without going into the details, um, Francis Bacon said that according to reasoning means that methodological experimentation and careful observation would lead to new scientific knowledge and valuable discoveries. This means specific to general. In deductive reasoning, we were drawing conclusions from general observations to specific things. Inductive reasoning is the opposite. We draw a conclusion from specific things to general things. In 1662, Royal Society of London was founded. And perhaps it was the first modern research institute in Europe. Franklin Institute? 1824, perhaps the first U.S. research institute, and it was the first institute that received government grant. Charles Darwin, 1859, led to modern experimentational design. Even though his theories and his findings were based upon observation, and that led to the development of his theory, but his contribution is that his theories led to a lot of experimentation. Frederick Trailer, he's considered father of scientific management when he did his time and motion studies to coordinate employees and their work. National Science Foundation in U.S., 1949, in Henry Truman's era. And there were a lot of behavioral science movements in research. For example, Antle Mayo Hawthorne studies that state that when employees are being monitored, their productivity differs. Similarly, Herzberg's industrial hygiene theory, Maslow's hierarchy of needs, theory X, theory Y. All these behavioral science movements belong to this era. So what is scientific method? How do we conduct research? According to general definition, scientific method is a shared approach to understanding the world. It is a standard sequence of steps in formulating and answering questions. So scientific method is basically sequence of steps that we take whenever we conduct any research study. Scientific method includes the following steps. Identification and definition of a problem. This identification could be based upon researchers' observation. This leads to formulation of hypothesis or formal research questions. What is a hypothesis? Hypothesis is basically a tentative answer to the research questions. But how do we find out? whether that answer was scientifically true or not. For that, we need to collect data. We need to organize it and we need to analyze it. Based upon that analysis, we formulate the conclusion. Based upon that conclusion, we either verify the hypothesis or reject them. Or we might simply modify those hypotheses. So in today's lecture, we covered what is research and what it isn't. We saw the definition. Then we discussed attributes of high quality research. We also briefly reviewed history of research. And at the end of the lecture, we saw a model of scientific inquiry, the steps that we take to conduct a research study.
آج کے لیکچر میں ہم نے یہ تمام چیزیں ڈسکس کی تھیں اگلے لیکچر میں ہم کچھ نئی چیزوں کے ساتھ آپ کے سامنے حاضر ہوں گے اب آپ سے اجازت چاہوں گا السلام علیکم